Would you talk a little bit more about your process or, I don't know, your, you know, your inspiration for certain projects or how mm -hmm. projects come to you and then when they come to you, what do you, what do, right. you do? Is it like, okay, I need to buy like 10 books that are going to help me or right. I'm just going to go into a room and I'm just going to write as much as I can or I'm going to do research or that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm curious about your process, either how it is now or how, how it's evolved or right. what it, right. whatever... Yeah, um, I think that, I mean, all of my books are very different from each other, which is just the way it is. It's not like a plan, it's just the way it is. So, like, my first book was a memoir that was very, that was literally like, you know, running away to the circus. So that was, you know, uh, it was kind of like my, my wonderful summer kind of book, you know, so it had a very clear timeline, and I didn't really do any research because it was about a world I had been in when I went off and did trapeze. And um, then the second book was, you know, very, pretty much a traditional, almost like first novel, in that it was, you know, where a Romeo clay was close, it was the world I'd grown up in, in New York in the 70s. And it wasn't a memoir, but it was a world I knew so well that I didn't have to really research it at all. And I think that that idea, um, that was just like an idea for a story, kind of just like a, oh, what if, instead of blah, blah had happened, what if blah, blah, and what if this, you know, it's just like spinning out ideas, but setting it in a world and a time that I knew really well. Um, and then the next book was, you know, historical fiction in a way, even though it was um, 1914 to 1934, things were so different then that that was the first time that I did a book that really required a lot of research. And I loved the research, it was really fun. I, I found I really enjoyed doing the research. And again, that was just an idea, you know, I don't know where you get an idea for a story. It's more like I think I'm, I think sometimes I'm drawn to, um, you know, some kind of psychological question, something that feels really urgent to me. And, um, but it can come from outside. You know, it can come from having lunch with someone and hearing something and then going, my God, that's amazing, I wonder. And then I'm not going to write about whatever specifically they said about at lunch, but, you know, what an incredible situation that would be to be in or that those people are in, and I wonder, and then I start kind of, and then it sounds, it's like somehow touching something that must feel urgent to me. You know, and I think that with, and so the research, there's a lot of research, and it took longer to write the, the third book because of that. Um, but it was fun. Um, and then the book I'm writing now, the novel, the adult novel I'm writing now, um, came kind of like, like that. Like I heard about a situation between some people and I thought, that's just like incredible. I'd love to kind of unravel that and stay with that for a while. And then, um, it kind of got... I don't know, one, one idea led to another. I can't really say it. I guess it's a little bit random. So this book has some research in it, quite a bit of research, because it's one of the characters works at the Natural History Museum and paints those dioramas, so I got very sucked into the history of the dioramas and that kind of collision between like science and art and theater, which I thought was totally fascinating. So there's this plot, but there's also this really dense world. And... Um, but the original idea for the book wasn't about like, oh, can I think of a story that will take place at the museum? Not at all. The museum kind of came out of that as I started to think about what might these characters do, what might these characters... But it's much more about the psychological knot between them that was the seat of the book. And then... Um, so those are all really different starting points, I guess. Um, and then the kids' book, the, the novel for children that... Um, I finished that's going to come out next year. It's the first time I've ever written a kid's book. I'm really excited about that. Um, that came from this amazing thing that, um, this story that Ken, my husband Ken, you know, what he, who is not a writer but who's a painter, that he told me something he did, which was because he was thinking about all the memories that were lost when people died. He started, and he wanted to save some memories for his son, but he knew he wouldn't keep a diary or something. And so 
when he finds a penny on the street, he picks it up and tapes it into a notebook and then writes just a sentence or two about what he was doing that day. So like, they'd be like, oh, Jennifer came over and you know, it was very rainy outside and we did this interview. And then he'll look at the year on the penny and write a memory of that year. So, oh, you know, 1982, I was whatever. I just moved to New York or I was graduating college, whatever. And so, and then because he's an artist, maybe he'll do a little drawing or something. But he told me about that and I was like, wow, what a beautiful thing to do. And what a simple structure, what a cool thing. And that became, I basically told my daughter about that. She was like, oh, mom, that would be such a good idea for a book. And I went, that would be a really good idea for a book. And so then I started thinking about what could be a story that would have a mystery connected to what if what if someone made a penny book and what if a kid found a penny book. And that's what that book is about, is the girl who finds her mother's penny book and then kind of gets to know her mother through this penny book and stuff. So like, it's kind of random, but it was certainly, that was where that came from. So I guess they're all really different and, and I'm not sure. You know, I've got to finish this one book before I know where the next one will come from. But um, so far, I don't seem to have any consistency in themes or anything, except that they're usually all love stories, except the kids' book isn't a love story, except it's kind of a love story, I think, between the daughter and her lost mother on a certain level. Um, and actually, all the others are love stories. It's true. Happy or sad, they involve, um, they involve the complications. You yeah. know, all that. What do you think, do you think your style has changed, like have you written in different styles for the different books or do you think? I don't think so, so much. I mean, I hope I'm getting better. That's really about it. You know, I mean, yeah, I'd probably be like really horrified to go back and read my first book and yet I feel like that's really a terrible thing to say because I was kind of young and people liked that book and I'm very lucky, you know, so, you know, but yeah, the writer part of me would probably be like, Oh my God, you know, but that's stupid. That's just that's just my vanity, you know. I hope I'm getting better. Um, I think I've learned a lot more about it, but I don't know. I don't think I never consciously tried to write in any particular style at all. I just tried to write the kind of book I would like to read. Yeah, I'm curious about. I I don't know. It's just a question that seems so, very similar to process and the ways in which people experiment, you know, is it yeah. sort of with structure or the right. form of things or, right. or is it with subject matter right. or is it with character and right. it's, um, the evolution, that, you know, of no. that and also just like how each project can be really distinct and like, yeah. I'm really fascinated by, yeah, by the subtleties in experimentation and the ways in which writers take risks. Yeah. Do you think that you've taken any major risks in your writing? Or um, what are your feelings about the idea of like of risk right. as it relates to writing? Or even reading if that's possible. Right. Um, I think there's kind of an element of risk in even just staying a writer. Do you know what I mean? Like sticking with it unless you get obviously some kind of big recognition. But most of us just kind of go along and hopefully keep putting books in the world and, you know, so I mean, you're not going to stick with it, most people aren't going to stick with it if they're only going to stick with it if they're going to have like a huge book, right? And so most of the people who stick with it aren't the people who've had a huge book, right? So something else, you know? And um, I think that, so I think there's a little bit of a risk just in like, I'm doing this thing and I'm not sure, you know, if it's going to find a home, or when it's going to find a home, or where it's going to find a home. I'm just kind of going on faith that someone's going to want to help me put it in the world, but in the meantime, I just have to do it, you know? Because there's a, something a little crazy about that, you know? And I, I think that's risky. Um, I don't think... Um, do you encourage your students to take risks? I do. I, I, I'll encourage them always to like, you know, try writing this from a different viewpoint or try, you know what I mean, try, try on a, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Do you know what I mean? And I, I guess that I do, um, I hope I take risks. I, I think that I try to, um, I mean, maybe that's, 
maybe the only way that's really evidenced in any clear way is, is that the books are all so different from each other. Like I didn't go, oh, I could write a bunch of books like this. Do you know what I mean? And then I'd be more likely to, I don't know, whatever, get it published or something like that. Um, but it doesn't feel risky to me because it's, I'm always writing the book that I need to write. You know, even the kids' book, like I suppose from some perspective, I, don't, I wouldn't agree with this perspective, but I suppose there could be a perspective which is like, well, but if you write kids' books, will you be taken seriously as a novelist anymore? And I don't think that's actually even true anymore, but there are snobs, you know what I mean? And you can be snobby with yourself. Do you know what I mean? And um, so I think maybe if there's any riskiness, maybe it's just in trying to really just go, well, this is the book I have to write, so I'm going to write it. Um, but I don't consciously say, well, now I'm going to write you know, a book from a man's point of view. I mean, I might, because most of my all of the people I've written about, even if it hasn't been first person, there's been a very strong female character, you know? So that's something I haven't really done yet, even though I, th I think and hope I also have strong male characters, but the protagonists have been female. And that's true in the new novel as well, and it's true in the kids' book, too. So, like, there's something. But I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't say, well, now I'm going to write a book from a man's point of view because that's something I haven't done yet. It's like if there was a male character who was like, you got to write my story, here I am, and not to be like magical about it, but unless it was really knocking at the inside of my head. I wouldn't do it for the sake of, of stretching my muscles, you know what I mean? I feel like there isn't really um, time for that. Like what there's time for is to write the book that needs to be written, not the book that has certain stylistic or whatever elements that I haven't written yet, you know what I mean? So.